Live at Virtue Field in Burlington, Vermont, Vermont Green FC hosts Seacoast United as the Phantoms come to town for an early season rematch. Just four games in to the Northeast Division USL2 schedule and Vermont Green a chance to avenge their only loss as they dropped a one to nothing match earlier this season on the road against Seacoast. Hello everybody, I'm Brian McLaughlin, Matt Montel here with me. Matt, so great to be back, the second home game of the year year for Vermont Green and it's an early season big matchup against a team that is 3-0 nine full points through three games what are you expecting from the Green after watching them in a dominant win at home last time against a pretty tough co competition today in Seacoast well first off uh, good evening Brian what a glorious day we have here for a uh, big matchup just like you said these two are right now trying to gun for the top spots either one or two um I'm expecting, honestly, right out of the gate, Vermont Green FC to take all that energy and all that really good performance from last weekend's home match, carry that over. And I want to see it in the first 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to see it necessarily like a slow start for it. I want to see them go after Seacoast and catch them off guard a little bit. I think Seacoast is going to be a little bit cocky about this, just seeing as they were, you know, they could hold down that one nothing win. I want to see Vermont Green FC to go after them. Let's quickly meet the Seacoast United Phantoms starting 11. It's a team that played on Wednesday, so maybe some tired legs out for this group. We're, we're cautiously expecting a 4-4-2 formation. Holden Brown is the starting netminder, while their leading scorer in the starting lineup is... In the middle, Tag Healy. He's an 18-year-old starting, likely at central attacking midfield. It's Seacoast United in the blue, and we're underway. While Vermont Green FC in their home green uniforms, they'll have a throw-in, Matt, and we're expecting the same formation as last time out for manager Adam Pfeiffer. They went with the 4-2-3-1. A couple of changes as there's Daniel Pacella in the midfield making his first start for Vermont Green. What are you expecting with those couple of changes early on in this match? I think, you know, honestly seeing Pacella start and Ferreira next to Ferreira um, in that second half when Pacella did come in, he tend to actually kind of sit a little bit deeper, protect those, you know, the, especially his two center backs, but that back four. And then you'll probably see Ferreira join Morrison a little bit more in the attack. Ryan Combe then moves up into the attacking midfield and a change at top as well. Matthew Gonsalves is the starting striker today. Itor Bjorgolfsson gets his first time off the bench. He is on today's active roster of 18. But Gonsalves, the man from Cornell, gets his first shot as the starting striker in this 4-2-3-1 formation. And that's exactly what, you know, Adam was telling us, like, you're going to have to essentially manage game time for all these players. They're all gunning for it, but it's also it's about you know the physical, uh, the you know the physical uh, test throughout the whole season. You have to rotate this. Vermont Green in possession. They loved going wide in that last matchup with Black Rock FC. Pacella plays it back to the captain today, Jake Ashford, as Nate Silvera coming off the bench. He'll back up today's starting goalie, Nathan Schnur, which means Ashford wears the captain's armband for the green. So far, it looks like Seacoast just sitting in defensively, absolutely no pressure on the ball. None. Yep. They're, they haven't really crossed that halfway line so far when we've had the ball, so that kind of tells us a little bit how the beginning of this match is going to go. That long pass, too tall for Nathan Messer down the left wing. Well done. That is Tag Healy, the 18-year-old commit to the University of New Hampshire, chasing the ball. Healy has been one of the stars for Seacoast in their perfect 3-0 start, but that's a beautiful ball long to Gonsalves. It's the second one already, too. They're, they're not afraid to go direct for it. With Eve Borier providing the pressure. Two Vermont Catamounts who play midfield for UVM, anchoring the center of defense today for Seacoast. It looks like number six, Borier, slotting in next to Max Murray. Two Catamounts who normally play in the midfield during their school season, during the academic calendar. Now in this club level, maybe a bit of a change in formation. That's Max Murray there. Think there's any uh, trash talk between the UVM players? I think there might be. There's a lot of UNH and UVM connections in this game. Oh, yeah. Two clubs located, of course, Vermont Green in the beautiful state of Vermont while Seacoast United in New Hampshire. And they had an absolute duke out towards in the, you know, the playoffs this, uh, this past fall. So uh, 
all these players are pretty familiar with each other, at least a lot of them. A turnover in the midfield, coughed up by Ferreira, and here's the first attack for Seacoast United. That long ball across, chased down by Ethan Taylor, the James Madison man. Taylor's got four assists early on this year, leading the Phantoms. Now that you've seen Seacoast in a bit of possession, what is it looking like to you, Matt? Well, right away, that was good recovery from Vermont Green FC to kind of get back in the shape, too. So I'm, I'm glad to see that right away. Um, you know, it was just a turnover, and yep. it kind of just ended up kind of out wide, and then all of a sudden you just saw Vermont Green FC get quickly back into it. So it's a good sign. Green back in possession. It was Sebastiano Musu who took the soft dribbling shot to Nathan Schnur. Schnur making his first start in cage. He's a Creighton Blue Jay, but another bad turnover in the midfield. Jake Ashford there, but again, Seacoast United stepping forward. They try to break quick. That's, you know, first thing you notice right off, they've, they've finally sort of entered the game in a little bit just off those turnovers, but you can see they don't, they're not looking to all of a sudden gain possession, kind of hold it, and then, you know, take a breath. No, nope, they want to go straight at the goal as fast as they can. And this Seacoast United team, a group that was amongst the best teams in this division a year ago. They were one of three teams to qualify for the USL2 playoffs. Here's Healy from downtown, and Schnur watched it well wide. This Seacoast group picking up right where they left off last year, though. I told you how they made it to the USL2 playoffs. They actually advanced all the way to the round of 16 nationally a year ago before losing in penalty kicks. And they're off to a 3-0 start this year. Borier, the one backtracking, and he'll play it backwards to Holden Brown, the Virginia Cavalier. It's good pressure. These two teams, I told you, they've already met once this year. It's the only loss for Vermont Green. It was a one to nothing defeat against the Seacoast United squad. Something I've found kind of interesting right away, yeah. too, is it's very fluid that, you know, that essentially what you would say the front four, mm -hmm. but especially between what I'm looking at, Morrison and Comby and Kamal, they're not, you know, uh, essentially pegged to one side of the field and, or one sector, as you'd call it. They're, yeah. they're able to actually interwove with each other. You know, you can find them either on the left, right, center. So it's going to be interesting to see, like, how uh, Seacoast marks that. <gasps> Ashford rose up for the cross from Messer. It ends up getting deflected out. And Seacoast United able to earn a goal kick, but a dangerous look on the cross from Messer. I thought Ashford, who's already scored once this year off a set piece, might get his head to that one. That was a good look, and Ferreira crashing on the back post almost cleaned it up. We seem to love a set piece. I guess so. That's, that seems to be something we are very strong at already. I think that's a testament to the coaching staff I and how well prepared so. they are. Absolutely. Borier. Comes wide to Jamie Selva. He's playing this left back position amongst the back four for the Phantoms. Eric Rajoy. Selva. Again, good shape from Vermont Green FC. It's, I mean, look at how difficult it is to break that line right there. If you look at all of our players right here on kind of this, this left side here, it's very difficult to break. You either have to kind of go over or top them or you have to just essentially keep the ball. We saw Vermont Green. They were tough to break down in the game you and I watched exactly a week ago. A 4-1 to one win over Blackrock FC. Yeah, and that one goal was... Look at Gonzalez. He's got to step on the keeper. Matthew Gonzalez cuts it back, but oh. Murray's there to clear it off the line. That's good defending. Last ditch, but still good defending. Great speed from Gonzalez. He broke away from the defense for a moment. Your golfson's not slow, but Gonzalez no. definitely brings something a little bit, kind of a little quicker off that break. We've seen them try to go over the top to him a couple of times now. Feels like that's clearly part of the game plan. I think you're, you're dead on, spot on. Um, clearly he's got the wheels to kind of, especially that, you know, they're cutting under the ball and it's sitting a little bit, so it gives him time to run up onto the ball, and right away we're seeing it, you know, three times. It's, it's looking a little dangerous. He only scored once this year in 14 games for the Big Red. Gonsalves making his first start as a member of Vermont Green. He's playing up top and has appeared fresh. Look at Pacella. Just brings it down. The ball on a string. He's a, he's a class player. He's very calm in his game. 
the matchup today, really sorry, Matt, the no, matchup yeah. between Healy and Pacella today, Healy playing that number 10 position, central attacking midfield for Seacoast, and Pacella as that holding six, definitely one I think you and I both have circled coming in here. Yeah, absolutely. Healy, you know, uh, like you and I were talking about before the match, young kid learning his trade right now, right? Just barely 18, just, just committed barely. to UNH, right? Yep, just committed to UNH. He's been a part of this Seacoast squad since he was five. Pacella unlocks O'Malley. He scored twice last time out. Trying to thread it through to Ryan Comby, who's playing in a more attacking role than we saw him a week ago. That's a good ball. Pacella towards Ooh, Messer. The wind caught it. That's Addie Hicks, another UNH man who brought it down. But Messer gets space for the cross. Comby's oh. there. A big bounce off the Virtue Field turf. Had Ryan Comby caught off guard. The referee letting them go. O'Malley with a great move. An early fan favorite, O'Malley, gets brought down. And the ball taken from him. A strong tackle inside the 18. Yeah, it's well officiated. The green reloading with Messer. Rajoy, and here comes the Seacoast counterattack we've been seeing. Healy pings it down the line, giving Ethan Taylor room to run. Great defending, O'Malley. Great defending. Way to get back on that. Ethan Taylor, a man who has four assists and a pair of goals. He scored the only goal against Vermont Green. I feel like O'Malley might have his hands full today, but he covered very well. If anybody's going to be extremely confident today, I think it's going to be O'Malley. <laughs> He's still riding high from <laughs> yeah, his two-goal exactly. performance last week. That's Players ride on that. They, they ride on their confidence a lot of the times, and when you don't have it, it shows. O'Malley, part of that Creighton contingent, now with Nathan Schnur starting in cage. The four-man back line has three Blue Jays and Schnur another, so four of the five on defense for Vermont Green. Very familiar. And it's ironic, they're defenders, but that group – already has three goals this year they did not combine for one goal this season no with Creighton wow yeah so scoring even more than maybe coach Pfeiffer and his coaching staff expected when they exactly. recruited them it's a great problem to have I guess <laughs> I guess so you'll take it when your defense is contributing and producing goals like oh, that. there's nothing like your big man scoring a goal off of set piece we'll keep an eye out for Jake Ashford here he is on the ball Wearing the captain's armband today. I think you and I have been very impressed with Jake Ashford. Yep, definitely one of the standout players so far this season. And here's the third man of the Creighton back line, Miguel Ventura. All the talk of UVM and UNH in this matchup. I think the Creighton boys are going to have something to say. Ashford, beautiful ball forward. It falls to Comby. Oh. That pass deflected. It's Great knocked play. out by Borea. Corner kick coming. So right away, I'm noticing we, we are playing that ball from deep. And yeah. I, I don't know necessarily if it's entirely because Gonsalves is taking up these different spaces. It's not that, you know, your Golfson couldn't get on that for it. But I've noticed this is definitely a different tactic. Mm -hmm. Feels like a different offensive approach. Last week was more of the wings. This is a little bit more kind of right down the throat. No question. Messer will be the man to step over the corner kick. Second already for Vermont Green. Towards the front post, it's flicked wide by Gonsalves. Again, something out of training it looked like there. That ball clearly whipped in towards that near post from Messer. It'll be interesting to talk with Adam to see if this is, you know, as intended as it almost seems. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, would, I would be very surprised, you know, seeing the two different kind of displays from last weekend to this weekend and how kind of we're attacking or we're creating our chances if that's not completely intended by Adam and coaching sure. staff. Well, when we talked to Adam before last week, he told us that they were still experimenting with that entire sure. attacking group and really the attacking philosophy was still in flux. So it feels like almost more experimenting to me early on today. I believe the, the quote was, there's a million ways to score a goal. <laughs> that's exactly that what, what Adam said. said. <laughs> Here comes Seacoast. Oh. That crossed towards Dylan Singh. Well done. He's the captain for Seacoast United. Mm, Got to play the whistle, Messer. He does end up earning the throw-in, however. 
Both sides have had a few dangerous looks early on, and now eventually they do give the free kick to the green. I would I would give the edge right now to green um, just on the actual chances for it, but yeah. I, I think you're, you're spot on. It's it's a little bit sketchy kind of on the on those quick direct breaks. Um, both teams are definitely aware of each other. <laughs> <laughs> it has been two sides looking dangerous early. Again, Messer with room down the left flank. He plays with Joe Morrison. Try to go give and go. Ferreira comes over as Pacella clangs a body. Colby over the goalie and Vermont Green in front again. Ryan Colby. The beautiful ball in and he chipped it over. Holden Brown. Vermont Green scores first. Midfield. Midfield with the assist. Beautiful chipped ball right into his feet for it. Set it right on a plate for him. There's the beautiful ball over the top, and on the first touch with the left foot from Combe, he's a man who played defensive midfield to start last week's game, moved up into the attack midway through, and Ryan Combe, the man who plays for the University of Akron, has his first goal of the year. Heck of a program, too. You got got to be kind of a baller to play for Akron. No doubt about it. We've talked a lot about the collegiate programs these guys are all a part of. Akron, one of the biggest names out there. Right. Was it Comby that uh, got the assist for the third goal last weekend, right? I believe so. That that Yeah, I think Direct you are Direct across correct. to O'Malley's yeah. second, I think. That's exactly right. It was Ryan Comby who slid that one across the six-yard box. He's in a good vein of form. In the 15th minute, there's Comby. Oh, he gets fine. taken down by Rajoy. That's good pressure. Let's see what Seacoast does to adapt. They've struggled at times. We haven't seen them in much possession, I guess I should say. Not necessarily that they've struggled. They they haven't. They definitely haven't dominated the center of the field. I think we've done a better job of controlling the ball in the middle of the field. Acres in front of Jamie Selva. And that's absolutely a credit to Pacella and Ferreira and Morrison. They're doing a really good job, those three. Through towards Taylor. He shrugged off, and that pass had too much on it. Rodrigo Ferreira gets the assist on that Combi goal, but it was Pacella and his physical play that freed up Ferreira. Those two are looking like a really good duo at the center midfield. It's one of my personal favorites, uh, the 4 2 3 1 formation, because when you have those three center mids, it, it gives you such a luxury defensively that you can kind of just clog things right in the center for it. And especially if all of them can be a little bit of playmakers. You know, Pacella, Ferreira, Morrison, all of them can create the assist. They can they can dribble and they can pass. I see a lot of benefits using this with those three. Rajoy, Selva, Borea. This is the best possession for Seacoast all day long. That's a long ball intended for Sebastiano Musu. Messer ushers it out of bounds easily, though. Just the second goal allowed all year for Seacoast United. They've been a stingy defense through three games. And remember, they did shut out Vermont Green FC two weeks ago in the first matchup between these two. I think we're going to take a lot of pride in scoring only the second goal against them. No question about it. Love that. First one they allowed was last or earlier this week, I should say. They played the Boston Bolts just on Wednesday. So another storyline, potentially some tired legs on a relatively quick turnaround for the Phantoms. They did win 3-1 to one on Wednesday against Boston. Came from behind in that one as well. Boston scored first before Seacoast answered with three goals, ended up winning by a pair. Boston is arguably probably actually, you know, depending on who you talk to, the best team right now. There is another long ball. Bilal Kamal. Kamal reels it in. Colby! Slid right off the forehead and ends up going out for a Seacoast throw. He wants that one back again. As great as the finish on yep. his earlier goal was, that's that's a pretty big one where you're expecting to score. He wants to rewind that one. Here's a look. Kamal does a great job reeling it in. Oh, unlucky. Keep going. Another good chance, though, for the green. 
Yeah, I believe the term is uh, strike while the iron's hot. I would say right now there is an absolutely a second <laughs> goal for us very quickly. There are goals to be had so far. Seacoast looks a little rattled in the back. Again, I told you how Murray and Borier, for the most part, they play in the midfield for the University of Vermont during the academic year. Right now, they are the two in the central of defense for this Seacoast Phantom squad. No Liam Bennett today for the Phantoms. He had started the previous three games at center back. One of New Hampshire's go-to men, the Wildcats, have Bennett playing a part of their defense during the school year. But no Bennett today for Seacoast United. Do we know if he's on the bench? He is not on the roster today. Oh, okay. Again, perhaps because they played just on Wednesday. Sure. He was one of a handful who played the full 90. Right. Yep. Could very well just be, you know just physically maintaining and managing the players. Still early in the year, as much of a big matchup as this could potentially turn into, like we talked about last week, so much of managing bodies and minutes yeah. goes on with these coaches. It's not even necessarily just, you know, injury prevention or that. It's There's no substitute for match fitness. So you need to get, you know, your players rotated in there to actually get match fitness. Just three changes for Adam Pfeiffer's squad from a week ago. For the most part, rolling with a very similar starting 11. It's looking like a good formula so far. I think Ashford and, uh, and Ventura and, you know, Messer and O'Malley are going to be pretty happy with how this has played out. The, yeah. the breaks haven't been all, you know, that scary. I think it, it from a defensive standpoint, they'll, they'll be plenty okay with this. Again, a long ball for Dylan Singh down the far sideline. Singh from Western Michigan, one goal and an assist for him so far this year. Was a big-time threat this year with Western Michigan. He scored five times in 17 games. Looks like a 4-2-3-1, at least in defense for Seacoast, and he's that one up top. Yep, you are correct. So far, they haven't kind of played him as that big, big man number nine. They've no. kind of just been feeding in front, I think, but that's only maybe because of the chances that have been created. It's, it's more so getting on the ball in the center, like a, a giveaway, essentially, and then mm. trying to quickly get in on our goal. He's almost that initial guy you find to start the counterattack, right? Yeah, and it's... I'm not necessarily sure if Seacoast is intending to play it direct, sort of how we are as well, but sure. I haven't seen them break essentially what you call lines in the field in right. those formations and I haven't seen them kind of try to break one line through the midfield to essentially you know their center forwards or their attacking midfielder does it take some time to find those lines throughout the course of the game if you've got if you got guys like Pacella and Ferreira you know actually both sitting a little bit deeper for the most part I, I've kind of seen them both actually stay pretty parallel with each other then it becomes very difficult to try to break that line into their center forward Ashford takes that foul after Jamie Selva caused a Vermont Green turnover. Tactical foul taken there by Ashford. Again, slowing up that immediate rush up the field from Seacoast. Just clogging it up as yeah. soon as he can. Look, look at them both right there, uh, Ferreira and uh, Pacella. There's, once one of them staggers too and one of them kind of holds a little bit five feet back, something yeah. right there, then it becomes even more difficult. Then you have to play almost over it. Selva, nice move. The left back. Room to cross. Ventura. Ashford. Ball falls for Healy. And Seacoast ties it up. Tag Healy a rocket. Man, the 18-year-old turned his hips beautifully and ripped it into the far corner. That is a great play from a young star for the Phantoms. Yeah, advantageous definitely, you know, on a kind of a little bit of a defensive mistake there. Um, just didn't clear our lines off of that one. It was a good finish, though. Give him all the credit for it. Here's another. That was another look at the goal. Healy ties it up. That's his fourth goal in the last three games. Take Healy, the University of New Hampshire commit. He sure looks like a player, even though he uh, – I shouldn't say he looks like a Division One player because we both remarked immediately, take Healy. He looks to be about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and – he looks maybe he's like he's 15, but I, <laughs> yeah. he, he is producing. I was I was literally aging myself talking to you. I was like, he looks like he's almost 13 years old. I was like, oh, maybe I'm just old. And no, he, he <laughs> looks like a youngster, but his play does not show no. that of a young player. Definitely quality. 
Musu. Rajoy. Oh, look at him screaming for the ball, too. He's hungry now. O'Malley. Over the top, Gonsalves. Numbers arriving with Colby, and now the flag does go up. Matthew Gonsalves just offsides on another over the top ball. Can we get a VAR on uh, that? Yeah, I want to see that one back. Uh, we can't see the whole. Now nah, we can't see the Tough whole play from that from angle. I don't know, ref. I think uh, Gonzalez is just that fast, sir. He Keep has shown, shown great speed. Well, this is essentially where we're going to, you know, see what our character is. Where It's game on now. 1-1, one, one, you know, it's a little bit of an annoying goal from essentially, you know, because it's just because we didn't clear our lines off of it. Healy goes outside for Musu. Tried to get it back to Tag Healy, but it was deflected nicely by Ventura. But now I want to see how we react. Morrison. Gonsalves. Tries to unlock Kamal. Slight misstep, and the green will play it back to their back line. That's fine. It's clear the experience that Seacoast United had. It felt like last week, BlackRock, they were definitely a younger team, fewer collegiate players, a lot of guys who are still growing into their collegiate careers across the country. This Seacoast group is full of a lot of experienced big-time players at the NCAA level. BlackRock, too, you know, I think they almost kind of did it to themselves in the second half. Yeah. You and I were talking. They took their center defensive mid, Didi, who was arguably, you know, man of the match for them in that first half and they slotted him you know way out of position to right back for some reason um and he wasn't on the ball as much he wasn't you know affecting their play all of the good play that they had last weekend was coming from him and i think after that we took advantage play starting to settle down as the feeling out process officially over as you said 1-1 one, one, it's game on but i think everybody after surrendering a goal it's a deep breath and settle down time now. Yeah, I think it's definitely, you know, you okay, you just had a goal go against you. It's now time to, you know, kind of try to find some rhythm again. Um, you know, you're about 20 minutes in. You're now is kind of like, let's see how much more control we can get over the match. Sure. Those first 10 minutes, like I was saying, is like, yeah, you want to go hard at them a little bit. But now, now it's, there needs to be a little bit of maturity in the play and things that you've worked on essentially, you know, during training all week. Foul committed by Ventura. Just a bit of a shove in the back here. Nothing in this one. Uh, it wouldn't be a Vermont, New Hampshire matchup if there wasn't some shoving. Of course. There's going to be quite a bit of that it might throughout. be a kick. <laughs> might, might be a kick. <laughs> it might be a kick. Hopefully nothing more than that. Uh, you know. Musu, Healy. Not on the same page, so Kamal is there to claim. Ferreira. Well done. That's beautiful. Pacella That's unlocks Morrison, and here come the green with some numbers. Messer closes down the man, but he bumbles over Diego Navia. It's going with the Phantoms. You could see the intention, too, from Morrison. He wanted that overlapping run, yeah. but it just it didn't come quick enough. Well, as Seacoast United gets set to take this free kick, tied at one, just entering the 28th minute. Brian McLaughlin here with Matt Montel, Vermont Green FC, hosting Seacoast United. Welcome wherever you're watching from. We talked about it last week, Matt, not just around the United States, but worldwide. And we had that as Seacoast starts to break. And now a move around Ventura. Ashford comes well in. Done. Well done by Ashford, but just want to welcome everybody who's tuning in worldwide. So great to have so many people embracing this club, and in particular, people from all around the globe. I've heard Australia. I've heard Belgium. I've heard Scotland. I've heard Paris. Um, if you're following us on our Twitter page or our Instagram page, please leave a comment. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know. We want to know where you're watching from. It's been a ton of fun so far. Vermont Green FC now defending, though, a dangerous Seacoast Phantoms opportunity as Seacoast United have the corner. Their first corner kick of the day to the back post where O'Malley rises. Don't be disillusioned, everyone, though. We don't get this much sunshine all the time. Yeah, seriously. Bright and sunny day. 
I, I got SPF 30 rocking. Hopefully <laughs> that's enough. I'm just going to get my uh, T-shirt tan thoroughly set in. Yeah, it's more of a T-shirt burn for me. Yeah. A gorgeous Saturday night here in early June in Burlington. We've been treated to a pretty exciting match so far. Healy commits that foul as O'Malley came across. Healy just clipped him from behind. It will be a Vermont Green free kick. There's got to be a, another layer of wind that I can't see just above us a little bit because every time the ball kind of gets up there, it gets caught immediately. I've noticed that every single time, especially coming from the north where you see the gymnasium over there, that direct ball, all of a sudden it just dies right there and it falls off the dinner table. It is a bit blustery today in addition to the blinding sunshine. We'll see that impact throughout the game, and that's another mistake from Ventura, going to be a phantom throw. It was Ventura who failed to clear it that led to the phantom goal. So another missed touch from him. He was very steady last week, but some early struggles at the moment have given Seacoast some good looks. Singh. Pressure from Kamal as he's chasing Navia. Musu. He'll walk the 18-yard box. Tries with the left, partially blocked by Messer. And it is Messer who wins it back for the green. I think right now, you know, you, you'll see it even at the, the highest level that this game is played. There, there comes kind of, you know, stretches in a match where a team, it's not necessarily almost intended. They don't necessarily say it to each other, but you're managing the match. And right now, I think Vermont Green FC, we... We owned that first 20 minutes. All the best chances were us. You know, the sequence of play, everything was coming from us for that. You know, Seacoast is starting to get a little bit more freedom with the ball. Yeah. Um, they're starting to play a little bit more in, you know, our defensive third. Um, and right now I think what Vermont Green FC is, what it seems to me they're doing is they're kind of just trying to keep it a little bit of a stalemate. And then look for these, you know, advantageous moments. Gonsalves from Kamal. That shot blocked. It finds Pacella. He dances in, and his left-footed shot well right. wide. Kamal, though, won it, won it back very nicely with his pressure in the midfield. I'll be interested to see if uh, Kumbi and Kamal switch again, you know, yeah. just, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Gonsalves, you can see him on the turn, and then he was closed down by Eric Rajoy. And that's not Daniel Pacella's forte, receiving the ball in an attacking area and taking a shot. He does a lot well, but that's definitely not his go-to skill set. Yeah, we all got things to work on, right? <laughs> that's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. Rejoy. It is clear Seacoast feels like they've grown into this game, in particular after that Healy goal. They've looked more comfortable on the ball. Well done. Messer brought down nicely by Kamal. Oh, look Ooh. at him dance and freeze up Messer. That was gorgeous. Not only frees him up, gives him a perfect undercut of a ball. And Vermont Green ends up with a corner kick out of it. That's, that's serious technique, what Kamal just did, too. That's not something you kind of just shrug off. He cuts under the ball because Messer's going as fast as he can, and it's turf. Turf just rolls forever, yeah. so you have to cut under it so that it literally just dies the second it all of a sudden hits the ground. Some home turf advantage, perhaps, with Kamal training on this pitch. Knows exactly how it bounces. Messer to take the corner. Oh. Gonsalves was one of the ones who went up along with Ashford. Third corner kick of the day for Vermont Green. They can't get anything out of that try. Someone uh, pass a note to O'Malley um, to score that goal again. Yeah, let's let's the, do the same thing. The crossing shot. I would I would enjoy it. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think everyone wants it. I mean, nobody's gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> no big time fireworks of that variety quite yet tonight. Although hard to complain about two goals in the first 33 minutes. Ogunsalves just Bowser. got shoved to the ground well by done. Borier. It's all this doing a little bit of uh, defensive work, trying to 
create something a little bit from deep. He's not, you know, only just running beyond the actual back four. That's what we saw yeah. from your golf sim last week. A lot of that back to the goal play. Haven't seen that quite so much from Gonzalez this week, but it is interesting to see him playing that style right there. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do kind of with the style of forward that he is. Also, just looking at his size, it's sure. difficult for him to kind of play against center backs of that size. And He's listed at 5'9", 155. Exactly. You know, um, and Bjorg Olsen had a pretty selfless display last week, which I think, you know, played it's a very big part in that scoreline. Um, but it's definitely, you know, Bjorg Olsen's forte to play with his back to goal. Your golfson is available on the bench today. Should Coach Pfeiffer call his name? I bet we'll see him. Pacella wide for O'Malley. Oh, oh, and O'Malley continues to get oohs and ahs. It's O'Malley dancing inside, and another Vermont Ooh. Green corner. I think you heard us. He's got a swagger about it. Yes, he does. Oh, and O'Malley, who scored twice a week ago. Earns the fourth corner of the first half for the green. I'm exhausted watching him. Look at this move right here. Loses yeah. one man, and now a second. He's got those little feet. Great balance, too, it feels like with mm -hmm. O'Malley. Keeps the ball very close under him. Messer again, standing over the corner. Ashford, I would imagine, the likely target. High lofting take into oh. the hands. It knocks free. Ashford takes the swing at it. Whistle comes in, and it's going with the Phantoms. Just a bit of a bump there on Holden Brown, the, the keeper who now slaps hands with Gonsalves after the play. Ten years ago, that doesn't get called. No. I think even in some matches today, that might not get called. It's the most protected player on the field is the goalkeeper. No question, for good reason. Yeah, they do take a lot of the hits for it, but sometimes... A 50-50 like that, I'd kind of like the ref to just look the other way. And I would say, you know, if it was against us, too. Yeah, if, if that is on if the other end what, of the field, we're, we're applauding that yeah. call, perhaps. It's entertaining. <laughs> and the green reload after the most recent corner. Long throw, and it frees up Dylan Singh. Ooh, O'Malley, get on your horse, son. He's got Taylor in the middle. O'Malley chasing. Drops it back. Yes. Ventura came over and took it right away from Tag Healy. This game opening up now. Pacella, space wide left for Bilal Kamal. We know he's got afterburners that can go and run. Heck of a recovery from O'Malley. Uh, O'Malley. Did just enough. Ethan Taylor, a dangerous player down the left side for Seacoast. You, you said it. He wears number seven. You told me immediately when you saw, okay, number seven, he's got to play out wide, and Taylor has looked dangerous on the left side for the Phantoms. Yep. He's, you don't wear the number seven unless you've got skills, wheels, and a pretty good shot on yourself. So I should have worn number seven when I played. I love playing out wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. News to but me. You, I wish I would have known that knowledge 10 years ago, Matt. I, I could have been playing in this game. <laughs> you're generally known a little bit to be a little bit of a hot shot if you wear number seven. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not I'm not exactly yeah. a hot shot, so White maybe cleats, it doesn't fit me. White cleats, number seven, you're a hot shot. We're going to have to uh, work out exactly what number I should have worn based on my personality at some point. What did, number did you like to did, wear? Did you like to tackle people? Uh, on occasion. I was best known as a crosser of the ball. That, that was my best skill set. I could put in a good service. Eleven. 11? Okay. Yeah, I would say 11. All right, I'll take 11. That's a good strong number. What number did you wear when you were a player? Uh, I was a 6 for a little while. 6 for a yeah. while, okay. I like to play right in front of the right in front of the defense. Pacella's kind of position. Gotcha. The Green scored first on this gorgeous Saturday evening. Ryan Combe's first of the year before Tag Healy answered for the Seacoast United Phantoms. Early ball in from Messer. Gonsalves was there just outside of his reach. Was that directed out? It was. Another green corner kick coming up. Starting to get on the ball a little bit again, too. You know, there was that game management that I was talking about a little bit before sure. where, all right, keep things a little bit simple right now. Keep it at 1-1, and let's try to create something out of this. Let's not be a little too hasty with it. 
Messer will again stand over the corner kick as Vermont Green has had loads of looks from the corner flag early on in this first half. That's lofted on Cage, and Brown comes out to claim it. Yeah, that's the second one. It's hanging up too high. It's, it's For a goalkeeper, that's what you desperately want to see, something that they can easily just get their hands on. Looking to oh unleash my. Taylor. Oh. It's Musu. Save made. Ooh. Nathan Schnurr, a big stop on the break. A little bit of a miscommunication, it looks like, between the goalkeepers and the defense. Nathan They're Schnurr making his first start of the year. That's a big save on... The look from Taylor, and then it was Sebastiano Musu. Yeah, as I was saying, it was just, it looks like they were kind of talking to each other, hands up a little bit. Just some miscommunication from it. That's kind of how it just all started out. Two players that play together on the collegiate scene as well O'Malley and Schnurr, not on the same page. Corner kick for the Phantoms, and that's wasted over the bar. Shake it off, Schner. Did a great job. His first big save of the evening. That's definitely the best stop we've seen from either keeper so far. Into the 40th minute. Still even one goal apiece. Two of the top teams in the Northeast Division of the Eastern Conference. USL 2. Another ball that gave Ashford some problems from Ventura. Just a bit shaky at the back. Yeah, playing it out of the back right now, but that's a flat ball across the back. You know, you don't do that in the midfield. You definitely don't want to do that in, in defense. It's very easy to essentially for uh, Seacoast or any team to, to read that and pounce on it. And they have been opportunistic yep. at those mistakes today. That's been a big characteristic of their game. Floated in by Healy. Messer rises up for it. Settles for Rajoy, an opportunistic try, or I suppose optimistic try yeah. from that, that <laughs> look. Oh, but when they go in. Oh, that's why, that's why <laughs> you try it. What if? It's the biggest gamble out there. Beers a huge in the air. You can hear the crowd now starting to get into it. Stomping on these Virtue Field bleachers. Another great crowd on hand. The whole town out here. Again, it has been great to see all the support. We're going to talk at halftime with one of the club's co-founders, Keel Corey, just about all that support. So stay tuned for a word with Keel at the half. It has been awesome to see so many people rally behind this football team. Pressure from Kamal, takes it away from Navia and a throw in for the green. So arguably five, six minutes maybe, depending on, there hasn't stop, been really stop, any injury time, so stop, stop, say it's going to probably stop, stop, stop right around 45. Stop, stop, stop. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they kind of make another push for another chance on goal. Again, working it forward from the back. O'Malley from Ashford. Square ball for Gonsalves. That pass caught underneath the feet of O'Malley. But he and Gonsalves work hard to win it back. The green switch field with Messer. Morrison has wandered out wide. Pretty move to come inside now. Looking for the two-man game with Gonsalves. Musu, Rajoy, Combi for the green. Pinballing right now back and forth. It's a good touch. And Healy goes out wide with it. You know, even at 1-1, one, one, you're seeing Musu and Healy um, essentially uh, sitting pretty much right in front of our actual you know, defense, our back forward. They're not even actually stacking in with their own defense when we have the ball. That tells me they're ready for the break. Morrison on the chase. Kamal sprung him free. Messer behind. He drops it to him. Kamal's in the middle. Messer crosses to his right foot. He takes the swing. Shot blocked. It falls to Kamal. Nobody there. And Healy the one with it. Physical play from Ferreira. But it's still Tag Healy. Ooh. The goal scorer for the Phantoms. 
This is Dylan Singh, one-on-one -on -one with Ashford. And tackled by Ashford. Goodness, he is tough to get by. Yes, he is. Captain consistent. How about it? Into the 44th minute of this first half. Vermont Green scored first in a rematch with Seacoast United. Taken away by Taylor as he picked off Pacella. Borier, and they're able to find the 18-year-old Healy. Ashford gets a piece of it. Oh, my goodness. Acrobatic. He did a 360, right? and it turned into a perfect first touch. That was cool. Do that again. I don't even know what he did there. I'd, I'd have trouble re-describing that. I think we define that as karate. <laughs> Whatever he did, please teach me. That's just the Jake Ashford way. He's pulling out new tools seemingly every minute. Half is winding down. Let's get loud. Let's cheer on our boys. Let's get them riled up. Let's go to this half with a good note. Let's go. Into the 45th minute. The crowd again to their feet with the green in possession. Ferreira. Messer brings it down. Good first touch. Oh, a back heel. That was into his bag. Gonsalves. Come all on the chase, but Max Murray's there. Murray, the six foot five center back. Ashford gets there before Healy. And again, the green late in the first half, trying to push forward. Morrison. Musu on his back. Joe Morrison. And Healy, a one man counter. Well done. Well done, Ventura. Just used his body nicely. Mm -hmm. We've entered the 46th minute now, 45 exactly on the clock. Just waiting for our referee's whistle to bring the first half to a close. Pay attention to to any of the the players, you know, especially the defenders. But even you know, Ferrara, I've seen a lot. Um, they're picking their head up and they're looking for that direct long ball. And then all of a sudden, it'll either be Gonzalez or it'll be Morrison that are kind of like the highest up on the line. And then you'll see Pacella or Kumbi or Kamal kind of sit under, expecting that ball to kind of fall in that area. It does feel like Seacoast has made an adjustment though against the ball over the top. Mm-hmm. They're sitting a little deeper than they were before. But that's Kamal out wide for Messer. First time cross. Well wide. I think that was trying to be a cross intended to the back post for Combe, but it's watched wide by Holden Brown. I think he was trying to do an O'Malley. He might have been. We're going to call it an O'Malley attempt. Yeah. 45 minutes gone by. Vermont Green scored first with Ryan Combe, but then Tag Healy answered for the Phantoms. Tied at one after 45. Matt and I will be right back with our halftime report. Then co-founder Keel Corey joins the show coming up next. Live from Virtue Field, Vermont Green and Seacoast tied at the break. Live back at Virtue Field, tied at one between the Seacoast United Phantoms and Vermont Green FC. The Green scored first, but then Seacoast United, when Tag Haley, Tag Healy, pardon me, even the score up at one. 45 minutes down, 45 to go. Seacoast United undefeated on the year, tied atop the Northeast Division with nine points through three games. Vermont Green coming in with a two and one record that only loss against these Phantoms. Brian McLaughlin, Matt Montel with you. It's Seacoast looking over the top to begin the second half. Ventura physically battling with Singh. It pops free, ball across from Navia. And O'Malley got a piece of it, redirected back towards midfield and Vermont Green recovers defensively. First thing, first thing I'm noticing on the change, uh, as I'm seeing, actually, Coombe is, is moved into that center attacking uh, role. And I don't know if that's necessarily just, you know, to try to be fluid. Um, but it looks like Morrison is actually going to be out on the right. No foul call there as it was Gonsalves taken down. You're right. Ryan Combe is in the middle of the field, the Vermont Green goal scorer. He started wide right in the first half, and Morrison is playing that right side position at the moment. Both teams went with a 4-2-3-1 formation in the first half. That's the goal scorer, Healy. 
Charlie Sharp off the bench for Seacoast United. He wears number 10. I think he might be in for Sebastiano Musu, who was playing wide right in the first half. That's good pressure. Kamal again. Bilal Kamal racing with Max Murray. But Max Murray, those long strides came over to cut him off. To be fair, it was a good tackle. Murray goes down and wins the free kick for Seacoast United. Seacoast playing a 4-2-3-1 to start the second half as well. They've got Rajoy in the midfield along with Diego Navia. How hard is it when two teams are playing the same formation to find those lines? Does that change any of that thought process? Well, you know, sometimes it can turn into, you know, what you would almost call a dog fight. It's just, it's basically nobody really gets a lot of rhythm going because there's a lot of overlap um, between, like, those positions. Since it's, it's, Think of, like, two puzzle pieces just overlapping on top of each other. Um, so there's not always as much advantage, you know, in spaces to find. But I guess, you know, what you could you could look for is essentially you're having, you know. Yellow cards coming here, here, Matt. Eric Rajoy, after the play, gave that ball a swat towards the stands. That's number four, Rajoy, on the yellow card. Tonight's first booking. What a silly yellow card, just, just for dissent. A yellow card has been issued to Seacoast number four. Eric Rajoy. So Rajoy in the book for that delay of game, descent, whatever you want to call it, an unnecessary boot towards the sideline. There's the long ball from Rashford. Ferreira joining the attack. Ferreira. Give and go with Kamal. Borea plays cautiously. Really good Kamal has been dangerous all afternoon, yes, even he though has. he hasn't, feel, feels like he hasn't found his spots in front of goal, but he's been in dangerous areas. He's been involved in kind of creating the chances that we've had, and, you know, it, it, it can go back three, four uh, passes. Again, Messer to take the corner, the sixth corner of the evening for Vermont Green. Get this one low. Towards the penalty area, Murray rises up and wins the header for the Phantoms. It falls to Messer, to the end line. Messer wants to get to his left foot, can't get space for the cross, and Green have a throw in. I tell you what, a tall ball off of a corner kick and Messer anywhere near it, he's going to get his head on it. Sorry, Murray, not Messer. Yeah, Murray, he's yeah. listed at six foot five. <laughs> six foot five. <laughs> That is a big man yeah. playing center defense for the Phantoms. Messer, that's a low ball. And again, Borier struggles to get a solid clearance, ushers it out for another corner kick. This is good pressure. They've got him penned in at the moment. Yep, yeah. let's make something happen out of it. Let's see if I they can. like the short corner, there you go. Quickly to Kamal, towards the back post, numbers there. Pacelli went up for it. No ferocity on that header and the counter for Seacoast. Oh. Healy takes it from Kamal. That ball for Taylor. He's a burner down the left side. Taylor gets a step on Rashford. Good ball defense. blocked. It's Healy, though. He's dangerous, already scoring once. Taylor down behind the play in some apparent pain. Already one of the wingers substituted off for Seacoast United at the half. Ethan Taylor, who has been so dangerous, still down after beating Ashford in a foot race. Not an easy thing to do. It's something that, I, you know, we've noticed Seacoast has a lot of quality in as they break very fast. Yep. Their, their counterattack is on point. Vermont Green and Seacoast both tied at one. Taylor has... Shown off his speed down the left side of the field. But he looks banged up now. We'll see if Seacoast goes with any substitutions. 
The Seacoast group already has brought Charlie Sharp on at the half. They do have a couple other attacking options off the bench, Nathan Dirtle and Matthew Black. Looks as if Taylor's gonna try to play through that, bang, uh, that bit of a nick for now. No substitutions yet for Vermont Green. If you were Coach Pfeiffer, Matt, what, what potential changes are you eyeing up here? Haven't made a change yet, still tied at one, but you have a deep bench with lots of options to go to. I don't necessarily see lots of changes right in the center of the field. I think Kumbi's had a good uh, good match so far. I think Chell's had a good match. Pereira's had a good match. Yeah. Um, nobody's you know stood out very negative or anything sure. to me, but I think maybe – um, looking at one of the wide players, whether it's, you know, Morrison um, or Kamal. This is Charlie Sharp. Sharp walking in. He's taken right down, but Ashford got the ball. Combe turns it back over. It finds Healy. He'll bend it, and it's a Schnur stop again. Take Healy, puts some whip on it, forcing Schnur to stretch. Corner kick coming up for Seacoast. There's another look. Wow, Ashford just took the ball right off the foot of Dylan Singh. I mean, what a tackle coming all the way across the face of the net. I'm going to crown him Captain Consistent. Captain Consistent. He is a bit worse for wear after that tackle, getting looked at by a referee and showing a bit of a serious limp as well as Captain Consistent. I think he's going to shake it off. Towards Murray. Borier goes up and gets it. A couple of big bodies for Seacoast. They couldn't put it on cage. Rajoy. Towards Singh, and it comes to Kamal. We'll backtrack, and Vermont Green defends the corner nicely. But yeah, just looking, you know, to finish the thought and just look at, you know, who's essentially warming up on the sideline. Yeah. I'm seeing Nwegbo, I'm seeing, you know, Bigorfson. Um, I would say maybe of that, you know, attacking three just behind Consalvis, maybe Morrison, um, somebody with a left foot if they want to cut in and, sure. you know, have a shot from that side. I think a lot of the, you know, the great play that we saw last weekend uh, versus, uh, versus Blackrock was coming from a lot of width developed. Long ball for Comby. He and Murray touch shoulders and some strength from the six foot five Murray. Both Nuegbo and Bjorgelsen are on the bench. They are tied for the team lead with a pair of goals each. And I'm sure it's also in Coach Pfeiffer's mind. He knows this Seacoast United team. They're a quality side. You're coming in, you're at your home field, but at the same time, you're not looking to stretch this game out right now, right? You're comfortable where it's at. I don't think, you know, Adam's going to necessarily want to be incredibly risky. I think, you know, what we saw, the the most dangerous chances that Seacoast had were on the break, and they were from our mistakes. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily something that they had done brilliantly to create that. That was flat passes across the back. He'll say, cut that out. Mm. And, you know, needless giveaways. Ferreira drops back. He ushers Messer farther up the pitch. This is Messer. The green playing out of the back. It's Pacella back to Ferreira. Seacoast are doing a very, very good job of sucking all the air out of the play right now in the middle of the field, though. Morrison. Ashford. Down the line. O'Malley advancing. Oh, O'Malley on the dribble. Runs into a brick foul, wall. Sir. Sure looked like a foul. Oh. O'Malley didn't bring the ball with him, but... He got tangled up with Jamie Selva. It's okay, we're going to get it back. The green are still in possession, and here's Kamal from deep. Diving down to his left. Holden Brown, a sliding stop. It's going to have to be something special from that distance. Kamal scoreless on the year. Scored three times for New Hampshire during the academic year. This is where everyone needs to press. A, a bouncing ball like that yeah. in the back, that's where everyone needs to get very tight. Sharp, 
Comes out wide. Down the line for Singh. It's Ventura over and he'll use Schnur. Seacoast United, three wins, no losses, no ties through three games. But this is their first game away from home. They played recently on Wednesday, so there are some things going in Vermont Green's favor. But tied at one right now, as it stands, both teams coming away with a point. Healy to the back post. That's brought down by Taylor. What a ball that was from Healy to the back end. Just needed a little bit of a better touch on Taylor's side, but... Captain consistent ends up being in the perfect spot. <laughs> yeah. Gonsalves. Should, should we make him a bumper sticker? I'd be down. Put it in the nice yeah. Vermont green colors. That exactly. would sell. We'll talk to Adam. We'll talk to Keel. Get him an NIL deal. Yeah. You got to be able to find some ways to get Mr. Ashford, Captain Consistent, <laughs> some, something out of this. Right. Nobody there on the pass towards Singh, intended, I think, to sing from Taylor. It's been a very even second half so far. Nobody's necessarily kind of taken control of the game. Feels like both coaches just told their teams, take a deep breath at halftime. We're still got 45 minutes here after at times a pretty, pretty rabid first half with all the action. I think considering, you know, we're not late in the season, there's, there's still – plenty of games to go and get those points you're one one right now it's going to be a lot of kind of calming talk tracks in that sure. locker room Pacella switches the field beautiful out to Messer Messer step over series right footed ball finds Kamal Murray tries to clear off of Kamal and handball called against Bilal Kamal We've seen less of Messer and O'Malley today than we did against Black Rock FC, I feel like. Am I, am I off base there? No, you're, you're dead right because, honestly, the two outside mids for, for Seacoast are so high up since, you know, the first half and this second half, they haven't had license to actually get forward versus when they were playing Black Rock FC, it was the other way around. Their wide players were pretty deep defensively, so our backs could actually get into the attack. Sure. We've seen them try to get into the attack. Messer leaking up the left side now. Ferreira can't spot him. Combi taken away. Rajoy on the pickup. Charlie Sharp down the left side. Wow, great closing speed, Ventura. No kidding. I didn't know he was that quick. I'm tired watching him. <laughs> Substitutions coming in now. Let's get a first look at the Vermont Green changes. That's the big fella. Itor Beer Golfson is amongst the group as there's another look at the Ventura pickup. Is that a New Agbo next I time believe too? two attacking changes for Coach Pfeiffer, so maybe that tells you where his That's mind's it. at. Joe Morrison out, Deba Nuegbo in. He'll play in the midfield. And up top, the big fella, Itor Beer Golfson. So we know what Adam wants. Yeah. <laughs> He's thinking the yep. three points. Yeah, Adam wants three points. He's like, look at this crowd. Look at this weather. We're going for it. I love it. Yep. Attacking changes for Vermont Green. That's my coach. As it stands now, Nwegbo is operating down the right. That pass off the mark with Pacella and Ashford both in the area. So Nwegbo playing wide right. Combi playing centrally. And Bjorgolson is now the lone striker. I think... The way that we're going forward is going to kind of revert a little bit back to what we saw last weekend. Um, trying to play somewhere, you know, within the chest or feet of uh, Bukovson and uh, essentially bring up more of our team into the attack. Pacella can carry. Bilal Kamal. He's had maybe as much room as any players on the green. He's had Messer. the most influence. Oh, looked like Messer might have got fouled. They let it go, and it's going with the Phantoms. What do you mean by had the most influence? Oh, no foul call there. Oh, no, they're bringing it back. By influence, I mean Kamal has been on the ball probably more than anybody else on the field. 
next to maybe Ferreira. Have you been pleased with his decision making? Because when you, when you have that ball on your feet, that means it's it's kind of on you to create, right? Yeah, it would. It's not necessarily like his decision making is kind of being made for him because of how defensively okay. strong Seacoast has kind of shown themselves, especially in the second half for it. So he's had to play it a little bit conservative, um, just like you said, and that's you know it's not necessarily his job to create everything. You are Waltzen and number seven, Diva Nuegbo. Coming out with number 29, Matthew Gonsalves, and number 24, Joey Morrison. Now and some substitutions coming for Seacoast. Go get your last beer. Tag Healy checks out, which he's been dangerous for the Phantoms. Coming on in an attacking position, Matthew Black of Vermont Catamount playing back at his home turf. Two catamounts, Murray sends it long to Black. Throw in coming for the Phantoms after the battle in the corner. It's starting to look like a, uh, a very tall front three, or at least within that front four. For, uh, for Seacoast now. I'm wondering if it's going to be heavily on uh, long crosses. Taken back from Comby. It's now in possession of Addie Hicks. Murray and Borier. Jack Burgess also in the game for Seacoast. He's playing in that holding position. That's Burgess on the ball there. Ooh. Long ball towards Black. Flag up. Offsides. It's worth noting, I would say Messer has probably covered the most ground today again. He's had to work down this left side of the field. Him and O'Malley, but him especially in, in this match, have had to be the fittest players. Well, that's why I think it's interesting that we saw Sebastian Musu come out at the half. He was very active down the right in the first half. Black and 22, Jack Burgess, on for number 16, Diego Navia, and number 12, Tag Healy. Not a ton of room there in the center of the field. Very difficult to play kind of out of the back when the center of the field, taking a look at Seacoast right now, w where do you break it at this point? Nwegbo, let's see if his speed can change the game. Both Nwegbo and Bjorgolfsson, a pair of goals tied for the team lead off the bench for Vermont Green. Pacella on the turn with Ventura. Seacoast pressing high too. Higher than they did in the first half. Very. Ashford. He'll try to go long again. Bjorgolfsson the target, but Murray rises up. That'll be a fun matchup for balls in the air. Bjorgolfsson at 6'3", and Murray at 6'5". Those two are going to be battling inside the 18 for the remainder of this match. There's going to be, you know, a little bit of a level of bravery that you're going to need to also play out of such a high press from Seacoast. You know, when you have... Pacella and Ferreira kind of playing more parallel to each other deep. One of them kind of needs to actually get out of that space. Oh, come on. Slips through and dispossessed. Continue, Matt. No, Sorry. And, and, no, no. And one of them needs to kind of start to try to take up a little bit further space and take one of those Seacoast players that are pressing, make them go, you know, either make a decision, either they continue to press high or they follow that other center mid sure. as they try to get into more of an attacking position. It'll free up either Ferreira or it'll f uh, free up Pacella. Plenty of time for Vermont at the back. And there's Pacella. Too tall in front of him, or too much pace on the pass. Sharp for Black. It's Black, and Seacoast takes the lead. Matthew Black on the through ball. Seacoast United 2, Vermont Green FC 1. Lost right in the middle of the center of the field. Um, it's been kind of their 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 motto, essentially, you know, how they like to play. They they play a fast counterattack off of those mistakes right there from Pacella. 5v3. It's a good touch and it's a good finish. I'd like to note he's a little too enthusiastic for being a UVM graduate. <laughs> <laughs> he's just playing for his I club. Know. 
Black, who scored four goals throughout the year as a catamount, has his first of the year for the Phantoms. And a big one at that. Now on the road, Seacoast in position to take all three points. And now the game changes drastically. Now it is forward, 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 well, right? That's, that's it. And I, I'm going to look right now. I'm going to pay attention very much to Pacella and Ferrer and see kind of what their shape looks like. That's nice from Pacella. Wide for Messer, but that was a tough bounce to handle. It's going to be difficult looking at a ball, too, coming from that direction because that sun is pretty much just sitting right there over that building. Burlington sunsets pretty big time. Everyone loves a good sunset over Lake Champlain, but uh, it does set right into our eyes here at Virginia. It can get a little difficult to play ball here at this time of day. It's going to be a, a, a could-be-havoc-causing sunset. Any balls that go up into the sun could really cause some problems. Could go the other way, too. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I think, in theory, it's setting into the eyes, though, of the Seacoast defense, which yes, should be exactly. a good thing for Vermont Green. Free kick, though, for the Phantoms. Jack Burgess, the Boston College man who came in off the bench, setting it up. You mentioned that size earlier. Seacoast, a team with a lot of height. Borier, one of the big targets. Towards the back post where Borier was waiting, but Bjorgolfsson, the one who got his head to it. Yeah, all of a sudden their uh, their average size up top went to 6'2", 6'3". The goal score, Black. Blocked by Messer. That's Good a defending. throw in. Good defending. Nathan Messer, the only man in the Vermont Green back line who does not play his college ball at Creighton. A William and Mary product. Long throw in. Ashford rises for it. Burgess. All the way back for Murray. Oh, Bjorgolfsson got a piece, and it falls kindly to Ventura. Ahead for Combe. Over the top, Nwegbo here, the wheels. Oh, there we go. Deba Nwegbo's speed makes a difference. Card coming out of the pocket. It's minimum a yellow. Okay. There is the color yellow out of our referee's pocket. Deba Nwegbo just off the bench, and now a dangerous spot for a set piece. That's Cino Malley giving, giving hell to the referee, <laughs> saying that it was more inside the box. <laughs> Even you know, you got to try, I guess. Even you, closer, yeah. he's saying. Going quickly to pick up the ball is Nathan Messer. He's taken every corner kick today for Vermont Green. Has proven to have a mean left foot. Bilal Kamal also standing over it. It's a really, really... They're not going to have a shot from, from this position for it, but I'd like to, I'm very interested to see if they go ba uh, back post again. I haven't seen them go near post yet. Ashford and Bjorgolfsson are the big targets for the green. Trailing by one. It's Messer towards the back post. Oh, it wasn't a terrible ball either. Whistle came in. Messer frustrated. Do we get another shot? I think you have to. I think the whistle came before the cross. Okay. I'm wondering if it was a good ball too. Kamal's little head fake, I Dang. think, threw everybody off. That was a, a pretty ball from Messer. Yeah, the Vermont Green sideline just I, both, all three coaches up out of their seat. A bit curious about that last call. Yeah. Well, it was uh, Ashford was literally where that ball was yeah. just landing. That was going to be it. Now it looks like Kamal standing over it with the left. Oh, no. Again up in the air. Frustration from both sides. And here comes Seacoast on the break. A man waiting in the middle. Black gets around one by O'Malley. And a foul called on Matthew Black. Matthew Black has got a set of wheels on. Yeah, he is O'Malley is impactful. not slow no. either. <laughs> and he was running right by both Ventura, who we just talked about, his speed, and O'Malley. Yeah, those dogs can run. And now more substitutions for the green. Pacella and Combe out. 
Froggy Osen in. And a substitution at the back as Ashford exits. So maybe that Nick he took yeah. does come back to bite him a bit. Yeah, he might just be feeling it a little bit, and Adam's taking some, you know, some precautions for it. He's not immediately sitting down, too. He's not immediately getting treatment, so that's a good sign. Alfredo Bozolongo also comes in. He's playing in the middle. And that's Henry Hilbert on the ball. He'll slot in with Ashford's position at right center back. It's difficult to come in as a center back, uh, especially, you know, center mid too, but as a center back at this point in the game, everyone is, uh, you know, lack for lack of a better term, juiced. They, they are absolutely, you know, up to speed on the speed of the match. Their heart rate is exactly where it needs to be. They're warmed up, everything. And you come in cold. That's Nwegbo who got his head to it. I've loved Diba Nwegbo since he entered. He's been playing well and rose up for an early cross from Messer. Yeah, I loved what I saw last week from him, you know, in the second half. It's definitely hoping to see him in this match. So now the Vermont Green front four looks like this. Bjorgolfsson is up top. Bragi Osin on the left side with Kamal shifting centrally and Nwegbo wide right. We still haven't really found Bjorgolfsson quite yet. Have I, not seen him involved. It's frustrating as a forward too because you want to be on the ball all the time. We talked with Coach Pfeiffer yesterday and, and he said, I tore Bjorgolfsson not necessarily frustrated, but he's a striker. He wants to be scoring goals. That's yep. that's his DNA. He scored two in the opener, but scoreless over the last two for Vermont Green. You know, most, uh, even at the highest level strikers, they, they need, you know, eight, nine chances in a match. And if they're at an elite level, one of them goes in, maybe right. two of them go yeah. in. You know, and if he's not getting at least, you know, your golf's in 10, 12, 15 chances through the whole 90 at this level, you know, it's going to be difficult for him to get on the, the score sheet. Black wins another throw in for Seacoast United, the team that is currently atop the division. They are yet to have a result other than the full three points, trying to do so on the road for the first time this season tonight. Currently leading two to one on Matthew Black's go ahead goal. That's Black going up for it and multiple bodies down. Charlie Sharp looks like he took the biggest hit as he and Rodrigo Ferreira continue to put their palms to their foreheads. You can see on the replay, four different guys go up. I think it was Sharp who collided with Hilbert. Yeah, it looks like an elbow. Yeah, just a bit of a lot of contact. Two players fighting for the ball. No need for a foul on Vermont Green. And then it ends up going with the green, it appears. I'm a little surprised, you know, there hasn't been just just a little hot sauce in the tackling or the play, you know, between New Hampshire and Vermont. It's been it's been pretty professional the whole way through. Two teams that have big time rivals from that UVM UNH matchup, as well as many Vermont natives and New Hampshire natives. Lots of familiarity between these two squads. Oh yeah, and I mean all the way down to the youth level yeah. for you know uh, players like uh, like Healy had, has come up here and he's played in say like the Nordic Cup. Um, you know, he's, he's played in whatever tournaments that we've hosted here. Sure. Vice versa, Far Post, Nordic, Capital Soccer Club, they go down to freezing Seacoast tournaments, you know, somewhere in the spring. Like, everyone, there's there's a lot of familiarity with, e with each other. Still waiting to get this play restarted. Coach Pfeiffer on the sideline staring on intently. He's not exactly a, a Thomas Tuchel over there, not, not waving his arms or anything. More, more the stoic approach from Coach Pfeiffer. Long ball over the top, oh. knocked away, and that's okay. going to end up as a Vermont green corner. The green will take that. That's a break. Let's get loud, let's get loud. Loud and fast, I can't hear you. Alfredo Bozolongo to take the corner kick. Into the 76th minute. You've got the wind. Vermont Green looking for the equalizer. Bozolongo with his left foot towards the front post. Oh, that's Pure a Golson push. was up there. Nuegbo, the one who. Nuegbo got pushed down. Definitely got hit. Bozolongo, punch comes out. 
an important intervention from Holden Brown and a good strong punch at that. That's as dangerous, I think, as the green have been in this second half. O'Malley on the dribble. And it's a foul going against the Phantoms. O'Malley is fun to watch when he starts driving towards goal. Those are fresh legs going at, you know, those those defenders and those center mids at, uh, in Seacoast right now. So it could be a little bit of tired legs, but we're starting to see more frequent uh, fouls right in that area. Kamal again. He'll have the right foot while Bozalongo likely with the left. Bozalongo goes down low towards the front post, and that's a wasted free kick. Goal kick coming for the Phantoms, and now with them up by one. This is a, a team that won one to nothing over Vermont Green FC in their season opener. They know how to close out these leads. It, it's pretty clear the experience on this Seacoast United team. Well, you can already start to look also uh, just at the shape right now. Like right off the off this kick right here, it's going to start. If we win the ball, you're going to start to see it a little bit deeper now. More they're going to manage this out. Substitutions again for Seacoast United. Uh, I would have to imagine their head coach, Alex Ryan, going with more defensive changes Seacoast at this point. The minute, We've got the win. This ball is going to sit up right in the center of the field. Two, uh, on yep. For Good win. Four. Your golf sim went up and got it. Eric Rajoy and number eight, Addison Hicks. Hilbert. O'Malley's starting to throw his body around. Draws a foul. Well done. Climbing back to his feet. Hilbert will restart it quickly. This green team down by one. Looking for an equalizer. At this point, you're just trying to come away with a point. In this 14-game regular season, this is game number four for the green. Every point becomes vital when it comes to playoff jockeying. Nine teams in the Northeast Division, Seacoast United, looking like the cream of the crop. Hilbert, intercepted by Murray. They can get one in the next five minutes. They, they might smell blood. They might try to go for the winner for it. But yeah, right, right now I'd say they're just sure looking for that next one. Vermont green, can't hear you. Ferreira. There you go. Get the crowd in it. Ferreira carries it forward nicely. They're giving him room. Towards Osin. Up goes Borier and another green kick. Oh! Kick. Oh! That's a red. Big hit after the play from Borier. That is. Let's look at the replay. The That's yellow a card deliberate came out. push. Oof. I don't know, sir. Nwegbo went down. Borier, the one who commits the foul. That might get us fired up, though. O'Malley continuing to work on the referee. Best way to answer this with a goal. Finally, the discussion between O'Malley and our referee comes to an end. Bragi Osin, the man to take the corner kick for the green. Nwegbo, the option short. Osin towards the back post. Okay. Oh! Pumps oh. down low. Bodies colliding. Wow, sure looked like a green oh. got shoved in the back there. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, that's Ferreira who's got I his arms to his side. Sure looked like a shove. I saw lots of shoving in the back post. It's oh, man. kind of all over yeah, the place. Yeah, Borier was going down, and I think that is what caused Ferreira to go down. That is a tangle of bodies. That's difficult to ref, you know, to officiate that. That was, that was, that was like limbs everywhere. <laughs> in the live reaction, yeah. I was with you. I thought Ferreira might have gotten the two hands to the back. I think he was just upended by Borier, who was 
going down as a part of a different collision. Well, you know, when it's your uh, your home team, everything's a foul against you, right? Yeah, sure, exactly. The Green Faithful begging for those calls. They're pushing. Intensity certainly rising. Holden Brown waiting for a substitution for Seacoast. Ethan Taylor subbed off. Waiting on exactly who came on for Seacoast United. We'll get you that official word in a moment. Oh, and now Bjorg Olfsson behind the play, tangled up with Charlie Sharp. The rhythm of this game has pretty much evaporated. Yeah, it's been a little bit on our side just because we, we've been a little bit more direct in our play, um, and they've sat back a little bit, so they've given up essentially some real estate for us to kind of get more into it and that's where you started to see those fouls for it but no uh, as a rhythm goes th there hasn't been much of it Singh brings it down he finds Sharp but it's knocked away by Ventura Osin outside of the foot pass and O'Malley towards Nwegbo he did a nice job keeping that in play and it is Diva Nwegbo Bjorgolfsson in the middle. Wegbo for Bjorgolfsson. Uh, just got away from him. And a goal kick for the Phantoms. Wegbo again, dangerous down the right with his speed, but Bjorgolfsson just couldn't get a good first touch. I saw Adam, you know, communicating with O'Malley right there. O'Malley had a very direct ball. Yeah. Um, I think Adam more or less, in that moment, it was so stretched, the two lines from it, and you know, Seacoast was already kind of marketing, getting back with that, with the forwards, with our forwards, um, that I think Adam is, you know, try to find one of our center mids here. Yeah. Let's let them distribute. You can then take up that space down the exactly. side. Exactly. Sure. Oh, and the Vermont Green bench starting to really get irritated. Another foul called against the Green in the 84th minute. The Phantoms doing a nice job of just slowing this game down. They're playing it at their pace at the moment. Mm -hmm. This is game management at this point. Manage the lead. They have done that well so far this season. Seacoast United looking for their second come from behind win this week. Came from down one nothing against the Boston Bolts. Hilbert. Ventura pushing forward. And now it's Seacoast's manager, Alex Ryan, who's being vocal with the ref on the far side. It's getting chippy. Back to Ferreira. Messer in a pocket of space. Messer. Oh. Murray. Not a great first touch, but able to be cleared. They haven't done a great job clearing it yet. Bozalongo with Ferreira. Keep the ball. Switch of the field, but it doesn't make it to O'Malley. Charlie Sharp. That's a nice through ball for Dylan Singh. Oh, it's Singh open on Schnur. He puts it wide. For me, I want my goalkeeper to be very aggressive there. I felt that there was a ball to be won by him. Um, that's just and kind of the first the game, thing I noticed. And Schnur did get a piece, it appears. So I think Seacoast will have a corner kick. Two of our referees having a conversation. And as there's a look at the shot attempt from Singh. Adam's having words. Wondering what that's, what's going on. A lengthy conversation. I think he's probably having a conversation about that uh, tangle of limbs that we had seen earlier. And now a yellow card coming out well after the play. Is this for Nwegbo? Diba Nwegbo being shown a yellow card. There's the referee and Nwegbo out at midfield. He and Borier have been nose to nose a couple of times. Adam's furious. I'm, I'm very curious what it's for. 
and it was the referee on the far side of the field, the linesman on the far side of the field, that in the end did confirm exactly what manager for Seacoast Alex Ryan was hoping for. I mentioned he was barking at the referees. I think that had to be the reason why. Yeah. Whatever went on there between Legbo and Borea. We'll have to find out after. Jack Burgess taking the corner for the Phantoms. Away by Messer. Osin back towards the sidelines. Burgess. Ventura. Wide for O'Malley. Does he have anything special left in his box? Long towards Nwagbo. Borier. Yeah, we're skipping the midfield at this point. Especially with Nwagbo's speed and Bjorgelson's size. A potential potent combo for over the back balls. Yeah, if, you know, Bjorgelson can actually win that ball off in the air and, you know, Nwagbo runs off of it. That's that's the play I think they're kind of looking for. O'Malley to throw towards Bure Golfson. He gets the oh. flick just oh. wide of the back post. A beautiful long throw in from Vermont Green. Bure Golfson almost had a delicious header. Mm -hmm. A great effort from a really tough spot. Here's a good look at it. Yeah, he he does everything he's supposed to, you know, back post for it in case, like, he doesn't actually get it on target. Right. Somebody can crash the net. In the end, wide of Holden Brown's cage. Brown has not been forced into major action. He's been relatively quiet in the second half, even. Selva. Ferreira there to intervene. That's Nwegbo down to Kamal. And now he unlocks Pure Golfson. Positive play from Vermont Green. Nwegbo. Diba Nwegbo with Selva colliding. Kamal arrives. Pulled back nicely. Nathan Dirtle. But Pure Golfson. These two sides can't figure out how to hold on to it at the moment. They got enough time to create another chance. Can Vermont Green find an equalizer into the 89th minute? Space for Nwegbo. Loads up with the right foot. That ball too long for Osin. Out for a green throw. Messer quickly for Ventura. Space for Bozalongo. Ferreira. O'Malley. He'll take his man on. It's O'Malley. Somebody get on it. Get on it. There you go. Osin cuts it back for Kamal. He dances along the edge of the 18. Seacoast is packing it in now. Bozolongo. Nicely wide for Ventura. Fine messer. Oh. It's still Ventura. Low oh. shot. Oh. Bouncing Get. ball. Save again. It's Nwegbo on it. Now Messer. Oh. He puts it over the bar. A bobbled save from Brown almost ended up perfectly See. for Aitor, Aitor Bjur Golfson. I felt that Golfson was essentially fouled, but let's take another look. Ooh. Ooh. Bjur it's kind of hard to see Brown. from that replay. I tell you what. He Brown, was asking for it. Brown definitely took down Bjur Golfson, but I think it was as Bjur Golfson was taking the ball away from Brown. Two guys making a play on the ball. And we've reached the 90th minute marker. Should have a decent amount. There's another look. Yeah, Bjorn Golfson definitely the one who creates the contact with Brown. Great job Show. by our camera crew here. It's, oh. They're both arriving at the ball at the same time. I don't think you can call a foul either way there. Depending on who you talk to, but I think I'll go, I'll go with your assessment on it. Because Brown does get his hands yeah. back to the ball. That's the key to me. He gets his paws on it enough, and it's just kind of, yeah. Certainly physically contact and with Pure Golfson. For extra time. Into extra time. Seacoast United Phantoms with a Matthew Black go-ahead goal in the second half. Trying to ruin the party here in Burlington. Singh. 
bumps towards the end line. Over the head of Black, Messer has to retreat. And now Vermont Green needs to push it up the field. Messer doing just that. Borier away from Nwegbo. Borier still down behind the play as he and Nwegbo crashed into each other. The referee has told Borier to get up now a couple of times and he's refused. You can hear what the Vermont Green faithful think of it. Pay attention if he grabs his other foot. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my move when I'm playing yeah. when I'm playing pickup basketball. I forget which foot I'm supposed to say is yeah. hurt. Yeah. Oh look, he's completely fine. Yeah. A team that knows how to win and knows how to close out leads. That's the dark arts. Right off the restart with Ventura. Ferreira. Murray goes up and gets it over Bjorgolson. Win the bounce. Win the bounce. Shielded away by Burgess. Nicely back out to midfield. Ventura tracks it down. Ventura. Bragi Osin. O'Malley. Ventura venturing all the way forward. Ventura. Out for a Vermont green corner kick. corner kick. Well done by the defender. Get on your feet, fans. Don't let those kids be locked in the hole. What do you think? Last chance? Last shot, most He's likely for the green. The Alfredo Bozolongo will take it. Headed oh. down, blocked by a green player. Body's still fighting for it, and it's a goal kick. Ferreira went up and got it. It was Henry Hilbert who was on the ground and the shot was blocked. Friendly fire for the green. So close. A good look from Bozolongo. Put it right on the head of Rodrigo Ferreira. And you can see Hilbert on the ground. I think Brown might have had it covered, but man, that would have been what could have been had Hilbert not accidentally blocked his teammate's shot. Yeah, blown the roof off this place. <laughs> to say the least, they've been waiting to explode for this whole second half. There's Ferreira again going up and winning a ball with his head. Blasted out to no man's land by the Phantoms. Maybe time for one last rush for the green. Fans, we just got word that there are 1,217 of you in the crowd. Ventura, your Golson's there with Murray. Got to win the second ball. Ooh. That's a shove, and, and it's a green is in free kick. That's shooting range. That is in shooting range. That's enough space to get up and over the wall. Quickly, be... Osin grabs it. Your Golson right there as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be probably a five man wall. He's going to set up. It's enough space to just get up and over it. Curious who is going to take this. It looks three of them are lining up. Bozalongo joins the action as well as Kamal and Osin. We've seen Kamal hit these with either foot. Bozalongo has showed us a pretty good left, while Osin's got the nifty right. Looks like it's Bozalongo or Osin. This is Bozalongo. Now Osin always over the wall. Frustration on the face of Bragi Osin. Never quite got over it. Never quite got over it. Still waiting for the final whistle. All eyes currently on the referee at center field. This ball will at least be put back in play by Holden Brown. We've gone through quite a bit of extra time here. But Seacoast United has stood their ground. Bozolongo forward. Trouble for Borier. Oh. It pops free towards Nwagbo. Diba Nwagbo still bouncing, and Murray we just slides it wide. <laughs> Another how corner much, kick. How much time did we get? <laughs> well, with all the Seacoast United injuries, that's I think true. that's added up. Yeah. One more try for Bozolongo. Everybody to their feet. 
Over 1,200 fans in attendance here at Virtue Field. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Everybody forward. Bozolongo oh. flicked on. It got a touch from somebody. And in the end, a touch off of a green forehead. Can't say they haven't had some chances. They've had the chances, just haven't gotten that just that, that extra 5% that converts it, you know. And credit to Seacoast. They, they've been dogged in, the, in their defense. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been a little kind of chippy, a little nasty, a lot of pushing, but they've done what they had to do to keep that ball out. Ninety minutes and more. Seacoast United's Holden Brown puts the ball back into orbit. Just launch it to the corner flag. That's the current Seacoast's thought. Is there another rush up the field for the green? I'm watching the ref. Ferreira sure hopes so. I'm watching the ref too. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching to see if he puts his whistle to his mouth. One eye on the ball, one on our referee. Messer. On his right foot, he prefers it on the left, and the cross never got above the head of six foot five Max Murray. Muscled forward by Messer. You can have one more. Get it out wide. Get it out wide. Whip it in. Let's see what O'Malley can deliver. Floated That's up in the air. Is. Brown struggles with it. Kamal has his shot blocked, and a foul was called anyway. Yeah. And there's the final whistle. It's Seacoast United 2, Vermont Green FC 1. Matt, a well-fought battle between two quality sides. Wasn't for a lack of effort, you know, but as I was saying, it was, uh, it was a good defensive performance from Seacoast in that second half. They were definitely very organized. They stay unbeaten, improving to 4-0 and now with 12 points on the year, while Vermont Green FC drops to 2-2. Two and two. They drop points at home for the first time this year. In the end, it's Matthew Black who scores the game winner for Seacoast United, but Vermont Green got the first goal of the day as it was Ryan Comby who struck first. Matt, final thoughts on Vermont Green FC's day as we've seen them win dominantly at home and now they've lost a tough one in front of our eyes. Overall thoughts through two matches that we've seen. Overall thoughts, I think, you know, there was definitely a different style of trying to attack, especially what we saw in the uh, the first half. It was very direct to Consolvis from there. Um, but we also saw, you know, a lot of dominance out of Pacella and Ferrer and yeah. Morrison in there. That sort of kind of went away in the second half. I didn't see as much of those sequence of play in the center of the field, and things looked like they were a little bit more desperate going forward. It was, it was you know, these 60, 70 meter balls coming out from O'Malley or Messer or, uh, or the center backs from there, but then there wasn't that, you know, that, uh, those passing patterns that you'd see in the center of the field that mix it up, that, you know, kind of creates all those chances that we got in the first half. That's something I think Adam's going to definitely touch, uh, touch base on over this week. 2-1 is the final score as Vermont Green FC falls to Seacoast United. Next weekend, the Green are on the road at Boston Bolts, a team that Seacoast beat earlier this week. And then two weeks from today, back here at home, they play the Bolts in back-to-back -back games. Matt will be here once again as Vermont Green FC hosts the Boston Bolts two weeks from today at 4 p.m. at Virtue Field. Can't wait, sir. Cannot wait, Matt. This has been a fun one again. Thank you all for those of you who tuned in from around the globe. Remember, we'd love to hear from you. Send us a message, Instagram, Twitter, wherever, however you've been watching us. We'd love to hear from you and hear about where you're watching from. It's been so great to hear the response to these broadcasts so far. I know we're enjoying them. Hope you all are as well. Seacoast United 2, Vermont Green FC 1. Final score from Virtue Fields.